Um, all right, now to the good stuff. Um, loving God and believing in God has and always will be a choice of the heart. Trusting in God is a decision that each of us has to make at some point in our life. Judging by the fact that you're sitting in this pew, you made that decision. This doesn't always mean we're pursuing a relationship with God. We often have our doubts in faith and in God. The news, the good news, these doubts are okay. You don't have to have everything figured out. I believe our faith needs to be explored and embraced through our doubts. Many people think the opposite of faith is doubt. I believe that's wrong. The opposite of faith is uncertainty, is unbelief. Doubting refers to uncertainty. Unbelief is the refusal to believe. Struggling with our faith in God, show, God shows that we are growing in our faith. We are trying to develop our spiritual connection. If we don't struggle, we aren't able to grow. My journey with God hasn't always been a pursued relationship. I struggled with it for a long time. I've had many doubts along the way of whether or not God was real. At one point, I even thought the church was a cult. <laughs> I remember walking into Bill Barnes' youth group and watching high school students holding hands, praying and singing and dancing, and I was like, oh my gosh, what did my mother get me into? <laughs> Uh, I, will, I will let you know now, I do not think the church is a cult. Um, <laughs> I actually quite love this church. Um, but it, it was quite an experience walking into that youth room for the first time. I've grown up at this church. I've always attended this church. So I automatically assumed I knew that I was a Christian. I thought that being in this church on Sunday mornings meant that I was a Christian. I also thought that that meant I had faith. I thought that as long as I showed up on Sundays, I was growing in my faith and it was strong. Saying that I was an unruly teenager growing up would be an understatement. A couple of my high school advisors are actually here right now and they're cracking up and rolling their eyes because I was a problem child. Um, my mother actually rolled her eyes in the pew at the 8 a.m. service. Um, I was in my own world and I lived by my own rules. Wynn Sherman, the former youth director, once had to chase me down San Vicente Boulevard during Sunday night worship because I thought it would be a good idea to go to the pier. I don't know why, but that was my idea of a good Sunday night. Um, looking back on my life, I've come to realize that my faith was so weak during that time. God was off in a corner trying to reach out to me many, many times, and I wanted nothing to do with that relationship. A thousand forms of fear and pride kept me from moving forward in that relationship. I was afraid of being alone, but I didn't want to be around people. I had a fear of the unknown, but I thought I always knew what was best. Let's take a look at Matthew 14, 22 through 32 and explore Peter's doubts a little. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was terrified and beginning to say, cried, Lord, help me. Oh, that's the end, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's not, no, it's not, keep going. Yes, no, okay, I'll keep going. Um, immediately, Jesus reached his hand out and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. It is scary to be uncertain about your faith. But I'm sure everybody has moments where they wonder whether or not our faith is worth all this work. And it is work. 
I wake up in the morning, I have about three to five cups of coffee. Don't judge, I know it's a problem. <laughs> but then I read from three different forms of literature related to my spiritual development. Then I write a letter to God and follow it up with a gratitude list. I really hope all this is worth the work in the end because it takes me about 45 minutes to get through that. I've asked myself countless times if the stories in the Bible are true. Did Jesus really walk on water? So wait, you're telling me that Jesus walked across the water and defied gravity? I don't know. Like I said, I've asked myself if it's true multiple times. I've wondered, am I truly forgiven for what I have done in the past? Is salvation for real? Am I fooling myself when I say I believe? Doubt is scary, but this Bible story helps me. Not in the sense that I'm gonna go try walking out on the Pacific Ocean and defy gravity and walk on water, but I've been the person to reach out towards faith multiple times. But when life's elements made it difficult, I would reach back and go back to what I knew was safe and comfortable. Being a person of faith is not easy, and it comes with a cycle of doubts. Peter believed Jesus enough to get out of the boat and to take that first step on the water. But once he was out there, even Peter began to doubt, and he began to sink. This is one of Jesus' disciples, and he even had doubts. Not to mention the fact that he had doubts when Jesus was standing right in front of him. What's important is that Jesus helped him immediately. Peter doubted, but Jesus was there anyways. And if Peter doubted, that means it's okay for us to doubt. Doubts don't drive Jesus away. He's there even when your doubts are out of control. And everyone is much too important for Jesus for us to sink. Just like a cycle of grief, I believe there's a cycle of doubt. We are told as kids that God is our ultimate parent. As we grow older, we tend to question the Bible. We question what we are taught in Sunday school. We question ourselves. We question whether or not this is all worth it in the end, with hopes that we come back to full faith, stronger than what we started with. Faith peaks and faith falls. Right now, I'm at the point where I've doubted so much, all I wanna do is believe. We've been talking about doubt for like six weeks now, and quite frankly, I'm over it. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> I'm at a point where I have to believe. I've seen what it's like when I doubt all the time. My world becomes dark, lonely, and I isolate. When I fully dive into my doubt, it just doesn't feel right. My world isn't the same. All I need to know right now is that I have faith in my faith, and that's all I need to do. I know that there's questions that I might not ever know the answer to. Right now, all I need to know is that I love God, and God loves me. Who knows? Maybe next week I will doubt my relationship with God again, but for today, just for today, I have faith. I have faith that God's love for me is unending, and no matter how badly I screw up, God will always be there for me. God will be there for me through the thick and thin. You don't always have to doubt, and you don't always have to have faith. I believe I'm at a point in my life where I've come full circle from belief to having some questions to being full of questions and back to full faith in God. I think we go through many of these cycles in our life, and I'm just now at the point where I am okay. That's taken 25 years of these questions. It's a long time. I don't expect anyone to understand overnight. If you're at the point in your faith where you are full of doubt, that's fine. Keep doubting. Rest assured, it will help you grow. Don't be afraid to borrow faith. Borrow it from someone who seems so sturdy and so strong. If you're at a point in your faith where you just wanna have faith in your faith like I do, Maybe give back by being a lighthouse for someone who is struggling. Let someone borrow your faith. Don't feel bad if your experiences don't match up. 
Openly talk about your struggle to believe. It's important that you walk through this journey with someone. We are not all the same and our faith experiences aren't the same either. The most important thing I do today is doubt my doubts, not my faith. I had to make a decision at one point along this journey that I was no longer gonna call myself a Christian, that I was gonna be one. I decided I would love, serve others, allow myself to grow, and strengthen my relationship with God. Things had to become so dark for me that I had nowhere else but to seek the light. I decided I was gonna stop questioning the truth, that I was going to trust that God had a plan for me and I didn't have to know what that plan was. It doesn't need to be this way for you. It doesn't have to take you as long as it did for me. Return to what you know is true in your heart. You are here today for a reason. Maybe it is because you're visiting from out of town. Maybe it is because you've been invited by a friend. Maybe you're trying this church out for the first time and trying to kill a little time before the Super Bowl. Who knows? Maybe you're a longtime member who has watched me grow up in this congregation. Either way, you could have easily not come this morning, but something made you say yes. I choose to believe that's God calling us here today. Return to the love in your heart and return to your faith. Please pray with me. Dear God, give us confidence in the depths of our despair. Give us hope when we are surrounded by fear. Still our worries, calm the anxieties pressing in on us from the world in which we live. Give us your peace. Reassure us that you are always with us, even when we seem to be alone. Help us remember where your love is. Walk with us as we are doubting. Guide us through our searching so that we may seek it where it is not to be found, but that we may seek it in you. Live in us and grace us with your peace. Amen. So about three weeks ago,